Right now on KCOY 12 News at 6, a devastating Central Coast oil spill. In this state, we value our environment. Tonight, the criminal charges against the oil company behind it. And Amgen riders are on a roll and heading up the Central Coast. We're on the trail. Plus, the city with the rock has a solid place on the Central Coast. There's absolutely nothing I don't love about this place. Today, KCOY 12 News is on the road in Morro Bay. I'm Melissa Mahan along with Dave Alley and Jason Stiff. We are live on the road tonight in Morro Bay. That woman you just heard from, Margie mm -hmm. Schiffman, she moved here January from Arizona. She absolutely loves this place. Just one of the many locals who I talked to who takes pride in living in Morro Bay and, and talks about all the wonderful things there are to do. It's just an extraordinary spot. I mean, how do you beat this? What, what a backdrop. Right. Little, little overcast, but still gorgeous. Uh, Absolutely yeah. gorgeous. And Jason, you know, the sun and the and the fog have been kind of fighting each other. They've been battling. We've also been battling with some battling seals over here. They've been very noisy, but very entertaining. We still have a lot of the fog monster, lots of May gray moving on shore. It's not going to be a complete gray out for us, but I'll tell you all about the forecast in just a few minutes. All right. If it does get chilly here, Dave, mm -hmm. there's lots of places to go and check out indoors. Yeah, as you mentioned, there's lots of things to see and do. In fact, I'm going to take you inside a very unique museum here, not too far from where we're standing right now, that gives visitors a ride back in time so they can learn about the fascinating history and culture of skateboarding. And also an establishment been here for 45 mm -hmm. years. It's also uh, the proprietor of birthday is going on as well. So we're going to talk to them <laughs> and why this unique eatery is so popular. So stick around. Lots going on. But Scott, first, we want to get back to you in the studio for all the day's headlines. All right, Melissa, thanks very much. A 46 count criminal indictment has been returned in connection with the massive oil spill along the Santa Barbara County coastline last May. The Plains All-American Pipeline Company and one employee were named. The damage resulted in about 140,000 gallons of oil that contaminated the soil and the ocean environment for miles. Some would say that it is very tough to go after a private corporation when they violate our laws and harm our environment. But if you look at the firepower behind me, I think California has nothing to worry about. There will be a consequence and accountability in this case. The case will be in Santa Barbara Superior Court June 6th. In a statement released today, Plains All-American Pipeline promised to vigorously defend themselves against the charges. They also say they are confident they'll demonstrate that the charges have no merit and represent an inappropriate attempt to criminalize an unfortunate accident, they call it. To read the full statement or watch today's press conference in its entirety, you can go to our website, kcoy.com. Tomorrow morning, more than 140 of the world's best cyclists will take off in the shadow of Morro Rock in Morro Bay. KCOY 12's Amanda Valdez is live at Amoro Bay, where people are busy preparing for the tour to come through their city. Scott, not everyone seems to feel the same way about the tour. A lot of people are excited to see it. We spoke to a local business owner whose hotel is completely booked up because of it, but others seem to think it's just going to cause one big mess. I love it ever since the very first year. I have always loved the tour. Excitement is building up in Morro Bay hours before the world's top cyclists from the Amgen Tour ride through the city. It's bringing a lot of notoriety to Morro Bay, which is so important for us, for the Central Coast, and overall tourism. The Bayfront Inn sits across from the iconic Morro Rock on Embarcadero. Amgen is booked us, and this is midweek booking, which is great for us. You know, it's a Tuesday night. I've got 16 rooms. Owner Jane Beeman says she's completely booked. 16 cyclists will be checking in later today and staying for the night. A lot of people that are coming here have never been to Morro Bay. I, I couldn't be more excited. She says the tour helps put Morro Bay on the map as a destination that tourists should come and visit. You've got the, you know, handlers that are going to be setting up for tomorrow, you know, when they leave for the rock to Monterey. You've got people that are following them. Earlier Tuesday, the tour put on a show in Oxnard as they rode through the city, making their way up north through the central coast. Kind of a surprise at the excitement level isn't as high as it should be, in my opinion. Business owners who did not want to go on camera say the tour is just going to read congestion and fill up parking spaces that otherwise would be used by their customers. But for locals, that's just one minor problem to tackle in order to be able to see the show. It's a great event. 
and uh, those folks who live here, and even tourists, are really missing out if they don't catch it. And riders will be leaving from Morrill Rock just after 10 a.m. For a full list of road closures, go to our website, kcoy.com. In Morrill Bay, I'm Amanda Valdez, KCOY 12, Central Coast News. Switching gears from cycling to skateboarding. While Morro Bay hosts the world's top cyclists tomorrow, the city is the permanent home to a unique museum to another popular sport on wheels. KCOY 12's Dave Alley is live on the road in Morro Bay with that story. In boxes. Uh, hi, Scott. Uh, you know, as we were just mentioning a few moments ago, Morro Bay uh, is home of so many tourist destinations of, uh, and attractions of uh, so many different varieties, many of which, as you might expect, related to the ocean and the sea. But one very popular place that's not is just down the Embarcadero here, uh, just from a few blocks from where we're standing right now. It's a museum, as you mentioned, that takes uh, visitors on a ride into the past, present, and history of skateboarding. It's the Morro Bay Skateboard Museum. It was opened four years ago by owner Jack Smith when he wanted to share his expansive personal col uh, collection with the public. Now, guests get to see an amazing array of historical artifacts, including original skateboards that date all the way back into the 1950s, even early predecessors, steel wheeled scooters that are, in fact, almost 100 years old. Now, there's only a couple of museums like this anywhere in the world. Now, with skateboarders and fans everywhere, visitors come from all over as well, including just about every foreign country imaginable. What's really interesting is that I can have a conversation about skateboarding in the 1970s or 80s with a guy from Fresno, and then a few minutes later, a guy from Russia or Germany will walk in, and we have the same connection, and we can have this almost the same conversation. And one of the most popular attractions is the second largest skateboard in the world, which you can hop on and use for a great photo op. Owner Jack Smith is constantly changing displays and rotating uh, setups so you can come back again and experience a whole new uh, experience. The museum, in fact, was uh, just redone in the last week. There's no admission to enter, but certainly donations are uh, much encouraged. That's how they stay open. They're open seven days a week. Awesome. Sounds great. Dave, a lot more from Morro Bay. Stick around. From the vineyards to the flower fields, we are KCOR 12 Central Coast Local News. Vandals have ripped out and stolen a big chunk of artificial turf in the middle of a Santa Maria school. Students and teachers at Jimenez Elementary today are saying they're upset and angry someone would do this. The theft happened sometime over the weekend. The Santa Maria Benita School District says this theft comes after several attempts in the past to remove the drought-friendly turf. It tears my heart in half because here we are, we're trying to make things beautiful for our community, for our children, and then there's people out there that don't give it a second thought and come and vandalize this when we work so hard to make this a beautiful place so kids want to come to school. The school district says it can't afford the $15,000 it would cost to replace the turf. They say they're going to replace it with tables and benches. In the meantime, they're asking anyone with information to call the Santa Maria Police Department. Still ahead on KCOY 12, Central Coast News at 6, we go back out on the road to Morro Bay. Our very own Melissa Mahan talks to longtime residents about the appeal of the city. We get a locals only inside look when we come back. here on the road in Morro Bay. I had the opportunity to come and hang out and talk to some locals about what makes this place so special and unique. Take a look. Good destination, easy access to rental on equipment for paddle boards or kayaks or anything, or sailboats for that matter. Uh, and then there's bay cruises, and then there's dinner cruises, 
Really good restaurants. If you spend some time in the Morro Bay Harbor, there's a good chance you'll run into Gordon Peterson. When he's not out fishing for albacore, you can find him enjoying the view from his boat, playing his guitar, and teaching visitors a little history about the area. Originally, the entrance to Morro Bay was on the right side of the rock, and it came through there, but it was real shallow. Okay, and the Army Corps engineers came in and put in the breakwaters. Often called the Gibraltar of the Pacific, Morro Rock, or the Rock as locals like Gordon call it, formed about 23 million years ago from the plugs of long extinct volcanoes. Fishermen used it for navigation for hundreds of years, and it's considered a sacred site to the Shumash and Salinan Indian tribes. Now a state landmark and bird sanctuary, it's off limits for climbing, but certainly a majestic site that attracts visitors from all over the world. Family kind of town. And locals like this family from Grover Beach who have a long tradition of coming to the harbor. But we just love the scenery and the sea life, which is really nice. And the shops, it seems like the a The shops, plane. yes. And we come, we've been taking these girls since they were three or four. Whether it's taking a stroll along the Embarcadero shops, restaurants, museums, and inns, kayaking, paddleboarding, or taking a breakfast, dinner, or cocktail bay cruise, Morro Bay certainly has something for everyone. The merchants are all very, very friendly. The food is delicious. Delicious. I, I, there's absolutely nothing I don't love about this place. I love the ocean, the bay, the beautiful air, the boats, the harbor. It's just what we love. One of the most prominent fixtures in the harbor is the boats. Sport fishing is very popular among locals and tourists, and the commercial fishing industry has long been an economic staple in Morro Bay. The city even received national recognition several years ago for its efforts to preserve its historic fishing industry and rebuild it in a more sustainable fashion. So whether you're here to work or play, Morro Bay is sure to have something to pique your interest and satisfy your soul. It's a fun place to live. Yeah, I love it. I mean, the view is outrageous. All right, well, one of the things that makes Morro Bay so special, of course, the locals. I'm here with Allison Van Bearden of the Ho of Hofbra here, and it's your birthday today. Happy it's birth my birthday. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, when you think of Morro Bay, I think seafood, but this is French dip is what this place is all about. Your dad started this place 45 years you've been here. Yeah, 1971, home of the French dip, hand-carved. Uh, Brian's Fresh Rolls, yeah, it's delicious. And people come here from all over. All to, over. And it's so popular. Yeah, super popular. Locals know us. Everyone knows us. All right, well, thank you so much for letting us in and showing us what makes Morro Bay so special. One of the things, happy birthday. We thank appreciate you. it. And Jason, we do need to get a check on the forecast. I'm going to dive into this French dip because it looks <laughs> so delicious. Well, I, I would be jealous, except I already had one, and it was amazing. Thank you very much, and happy birthday. Thank you. Oh, this is the day where we have to have a warm French dip like that. It was so good, and no sandwich in the history of sandwiches has disappeared as fast as that one did. Well, the weather today has been really nice. Lots of clouds right around the coast. Today in Morro Bay, the high only reached 59 degrees. The sun was trying to break out, but... Outside, the low clouds have already pushed back on shore, but it is a lot warmer in other locations. 64 degrees right now in Santa Maria, 68 degrees in San Luis Obispo. We had a high today of 90 in Paso Robles. Right now, it's still 84 degrees. The wind really not that big of a problem. Most areas less than 10 miles an hour, but a little bit stronger in Paso Robles. And the low clouds and fog already starting to push on shore. The coastal areas with much higher humidity, fairly dry further inland, but the low clouds will start pushing on shore a little bit later this evening. Now around the country, we have a lot more active weather in many other parts, especially Florida. Lots of rain and thunderstorms. We have areas of rain around Indiana and Illinois. Lots of thunderstorms for Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. Then we head to the west coast. We have a ridge of high pressure just to our west, allowing more of the low clouds and fog to push on shore. But we're keeping our eyes well to the northwest, where we have an area of low pressure just off the British Columbia coast. That's going to bring us another chance, another enhancement for all the low clouds and fog Friday and this coming weekend. But before that happens, the ridge is going to give us a little bit more sunshine tomorrow. And tomorrow should be the warmest day for essentially everybody. We'll have some coastal low clouds and fog, but it will erode away faster. And then we'll have more clouds along the coast, both for the south coast and the central coast. For
before Thursday morning. It's going to take a little bit longer to go away by Thursday afternoon, but we still have a lot of warmth, at least for a couple more days before that trough comes in from the Gulf of Alaska. So for our area tomorrow, expecting some low clouds in the morning, then some afternoon sunshine too, and it will be a little bit warmer. Today in Santa Maria, we reach 68 degrees. Tomorrow we're going for 73. 70 for a high in Lompoc and 82 degrees for Santa Inez. Then we head to the north. Even hotter for Paso Robles tomorrow than it was today. A high of 92. 77 degrees. A really warm day for San Luis Obispo and also for the south coast. can take a little bit longer to get rid of the low clouds and fog, but we'll still have some afternoon sunshine. It'll be warmer than it was today. Expecting a high of 73 in Santa Barbara. The next seven days, we do expect more clouds coming in. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Tomorrow, the clearest and warmest day for Santa Maria and Orchid. We're expecting highs in the lower 70s, then below average upper sig lower 70s for this coming weekend, then a gradual warming trend for early next week. For San Luis Obispo, slightly warmer than that, but tomorrow is going to be the warmest day, also the sunniest day. Clouds coming and expect more clouds and a slight chance for a little drizzle falling from those clouds this weekend with highs falling from the upper 70s into the lower 70s. That's a look at your weather here from Morro Bay. We'll be right back after this. Kind of more obey today, and this was just the tip mm -hmm. of the iceberg. I mean, there's so much to do, so much to see, so many shops, so many restaurants, so many cool spots. So, you know, you, we can't fit it all in it in the time that we're here. But, Dave, you're going to be here tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. with Claire Anderson, bright and early for the Amgen tour, where they're taking off from here tomorrow. That's right. We've got a special morning edition of the uh, of our on the road tour. Claire and I are going to be right there at the foot of the rock as the cyclists get ready to start at 10 10 tomorrow morning, but we'll get going at 5 a.m. Okay, as we heard from Amanda Valdez's report, hotels and inns here booked up people are here ready ready to be out there with you tomorrow dave so we're looking forward to that thank you all for joining us we're gonna enjoy some of this french dip from Morro bay we'll see you next time have a great night i want the pickle, pickle. <laughs>